So spotted bass, um, at least in rivers, they really like wood. They like wood with some flow. Not a lot of flow, but not no flow either. And so this stretch right here is usually pretty good for them because uh, it's right above a pretty big shoal um, and this current starts to pick up the closer you get to the shoal. This wood right here definitely has some, some current that sweeps by it very slowly. And that's the kind of places that you, you tend to find them. Uh, when we were doing our multi-species telemetry project on the Flint River, where we had shoal bass, largemouth bass, and spotted bass tagged with radio trackers at the same time in the same general area of the river, we really saw how three species, those three species just selected slightly different habitats. You know, shoal bass, of course, were in the rocks and the flow, and largemouth bass were in the pools, um, usually on wood. But spots were kind of in between the two. Uh, they like some rocks, they like some wood, uh, they like some flow, but they didn't like wood as much as largemouth do. They didn't like rocks as much as shoal bass do, and they like more current than largemouths, but less than shoal bass. And it was really interesting. I, I could boil it all down to as we kept working on that project and we had the sample and we were looking for all three species. One guaranteed place you were going to get a spotted bass was the first piece of wood that you saw below a shoal where the water was just starting to slow down but it wasn't slow yet. That was almost a guarantee that a spotted bass was going to be there and they, that pretty much was true probably nine out of ten times. It was pretty amazing how consistent that was on the Flint River. Now here the spotted bass are the dominant bass species so they're kind of everywhere um, but when you're really targeting them it's hard to beat these big blowdowns um, along the shoreline with uh, some flow that sweeps through them.